The Russian Revolution did not just impact the future of Russia, but the world. Start of the Revolution. On January 3rd, 1905, 15,000 people took the streets of St. Petersburg to protest against their lifestyle, a strike led by controversial Orthodox priest, Georgi Gapin, which led to the march of the Winter Palace on January 7th. This was the turning point in the relationship of their leader to Tsar Nicholas II. January 9th, as the crowd approaches, anxious the guards open fire upon the peaceful protesters killing at least 200 people. This is known as Bloody Sunday. According to Sergei White, the guards got nervous when they saw a crowd approaching them. January 18th, Cesar met with the delegation of industrial workers and declared that he has forgiven them. At the end of November the 1st of October, an uprising of several thousand military personnel at a naval base in Sevatopol, Ukraine, it is eventually crushed by troops loyal to, the, to Cesar, a massive strike beginning on October 7th. October 10th, a meeting occurred between Sergei White and Cesar. Cesar must decide either impose a military dictatorship or relent and form a constitutional government. Strike actions in St. Petersburg spreads to become a general strike. A Menshevik dominated council, the Soviet of Soldiers and Workers' Deputies, is formed in St. Petersburg with Lenin Trotsky appointed vice chairman. October 15th, White presents Nicholas II with an October Revolution draft that promises liberal reforms in an elected drama. The 17th of October, Nicholas II signs a private date, the October Manifesto. It is received well but does not quell unrest. October 19th, Sergei White announced the creation of a council of ministers offering key posts to cadets who refused the offer. October 21st through 31st, the St. Petersburg Soviet orders an end to the general strike. A military bases, Kronstadt and Vladivostok communities erupted. The Karoslav sailor vote to form their own Soviet. The Union of Peasants meets in Moscow and draws up depends on representative assembly and land proposition. November 11th through 16th, among the Army and Navy bases, Unities and unrest breakouts rebels seized a naval vessel, the Ochka, before the government troops crushed the uprising. On the, Nove on the 24th of November, the government announced the relaxation and press seizorship laws and regulations, sparking a flood of anti-terrorist literature and propaganda. December 3rd, approximately 250 members of the St. Petersburg Soviet are arrested, apparently for taking the receipts for large dashes of weapons. Four days later, Moscow is paralyzed by a general strike. On the 10th, an uprising in Moscow sees various political and revolutionary groups attempt to take control of the city. November 15th through the 19th, White orders the army of Tsarist soldiers to crack down on suspected terrorists. Protesters in the radical press, Cesar's troops, finally contained Moscow's uprising, killing hundreds. December 23rd, a young radical SR member, Alexander Kerensky, is arrested and imprisoned after being found with inflammatory anti January 9th, 1917, is the 12th anniversary of the Bloody Sunday, and over 14,000 Russian workers go on strike. 14th of February, 100,000 and more workers still on strike, while Duma attacks the government because of failing to respond to food shortages. The February Revolution begins February 19th. Cesar announces food radiations, leading to panic buying in cities, where food availability is already critically low. On Thursday, February 23rd, 1917, women workers in Petrograd left their factories and entered the streets to protest. It was International Women's Day and the women of Russia were ready to be heard. The 25th strikes continues to expand with more than 200,000 workers involved. February 26th, ordered by Cesar, his troops fired upon killing dozens and unarmed and defenseless protesters also ordering the eradication of Duma. March 2nd through the 3rd, Cesar was met with the Duma's Provisional Government Committee. 
who demanded his abdication after consulting with the general Caesar abducted abdication and favors to his brother Michael. Michael refuses the throne unless it is offered to him by the constituted assembly elected by the people. This ends more than 300 years of Romanov rule. The provisional government issues a set of liberal principles by which it intends to govern. This includes improvements to civil rights and freedoms, amenities for political prisoners, and the organization of elections for a constituted assembly. October 10th through the 23rd, the October Revolution begins. The Bolshevik Central Committee declares that an armed uprising is inevitable. Petrograd, Soviet, and Bolshevik pass motions for the seizure of power and debate that means by which this should be achieved. Bolshevik leads an uprising in Tallinn. October 24th, provisional government troops attempt to close Bolsheviks' printing presses, prompted the M October 25th, Lenin announces that the Bolsheviks have seized power and calls for preparations for a Soviet government. Menshevik and moderate SR delegates walk out of a Congress of Soviet. October 26th, the MRC arrests provisional government members in the Winter Palace, except for Koreski, who has fled. 18 hours after seizing power, Lenin issues the decree on land calling for the abolition of private ownership and the decree on peace urging an immediate ceasefire and treaty. November 3rd, after a week of bitter fighting, the Bolsheviks Red Guards win control over November 10th through 12th. The new government abolishes all Tsarist ranks, titles, and privileges. Elections of Constitute Assembly begins. These elections take a week to complete and produce a voter's turnout of 44 million people. What are your feelings towards the Russian Revolution and War of 1917? What are my feelings? Yes. And War of 1917. Okay. Uh, they changed as I uh, was uh, going through my life journey. As anybody's feelings about uh, historical event changes, person matures and learns more about it. Initially, it's all uh, in black and white, good and bad. And of course, uh, you are supposedly on the good side. October Revolution is something which every Soviet kid was learning from kindergarten through high school and even in university, you would learn a couple of things about it. And uh, it was always uh, presented to you, you were instructed about it, as an event that liberated people, gave them all the freedoms and uh, liberties and good life that they were enjoying currently. People fought for it. Uh, 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 the simple people overthrew the corrupt nobility and took over and allowed uh, everybody to get educated and progress in life. And that was a basically a narrative of October Revolution. Then the nobility and outside imperialist countries gathered together and decided to kill the revolution. And therefore, the Civil War started, which lasted three years. And Americans also were there on the Russian soil in the northern Russia. So that's what you were told and you thought it was the truth, and you took it for granted, and you went through your life with it. Then, as you were growing up, sometimes in various forbidden books, because in the Soviet Union there was something which was not allowed to be read. But people nevertheless traded in it. They made photocopies of old books, they also brought some books uh, from abroad in Russian, and those were passed underground very widely. I was, you can get in trouble if you were caught, but usually uh, they were not hunting small fishes. You would get in trouble if you read it and started acting on it, organizing, making protests, then you'll get it hard. But if you just treat it as I did, you most probably will get away with it, as I did. And then you read from it that not everything is so simple. Not all the Reds, and as you remember, the Civil War which followed the October Revolution was between Reds, who were communists, and Whites, uh, who were uh, 
in favor of a, a republic or, a, 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 or monarchy, depending on who they were. And not all whites were bad, and there were some uh, terrible blood curling uh, crimes committed by reds, and also by whites, and that not everything that you grew up uh, told when you were grew up was true. So eventually, at this uh, point in life, I see October Revolution as a, tra a tragic event and missed opportunity, which screwed up. As you remember, before October Revolution, there was a February Revolution, which was a democratic revolution, where they established a representative, or rather tried to establish a representative government by the people, more or less close to American or French model. And uh, Bolsheviks didn't uh, want to do anything with it. it. It was a weak government because of combination of personalities, opportunities, and bad timing. And but that was a missed opportunity for Russia. So I, uh, now I see October Revolution as a tragic event, which uh, wiped out millions of people and didn't achieve anything for the country. Do you think the war was worth it? The war, the uh, civil war. Yes. No war is worth it. I spent uh, part of my life in what they call peacekeeping operations. I never took part in the war, but I watched it very, very close. Close enough to be discussed, uh, discussed uh, with wars uh, completely. So no war is uh, worth anything. Usually it doesn't decide anything. There are two or three wars, maybe Second World War is one, which are really inevitable and had to be fight, fought. But otherwise, it, no, it was not worse. If you're asking about civil war, no, because during civil war especially, the worst of the worst usually flowed up. The reasonable people, people of the center, moderate people, people of uh, perspective, like not so fast, let's think about it. These people are swept away because they are sometimes appear indecisive. But radicals, those who think that everything complicated should be solved with a shot or a saber, usually come to the helm and they create havoc. Where do you think Russia would be today without the revolution? If we're talking about the October Revolution, it will be a Western European country with its own specificities, uh, much more advanced than it is now, with more civil liberties and more enlightened if we talk about the October Revolution. The February Revolution was necessary, I think, because it uh, did away with the feudal system of monarchy because the uh, Russians are, in contrast to European monarchs, you have uh, a monarchy in Britain, in Scandinavian countries, now in Netherlands, they're all monarchies, they all have. But those are just, you know, figureheads. Russian uh, czar was like a president here get a uh, final decision-making authority. So that has to be, uh, and under him there were a, a whole case of huge landowners and peasants were living off uh, as a sharecroppers. So that had to be uh, done away with. And February Revolution had done this, but then it was, uh, it's, uh, the results were snatched by October Revolution. That was, of course, uh, did more, more harm than good. How did the revolution impact your family? Uh, how did it, imp it impacted my family positively? Why? Because we, in both ways. First, uh, uh, negatively, my uh, grandfather, who was a peasant, he was drafted, uh, initially the family history said that was, he was drafted by Reds, but then my father told me that he was drafted by Whites, and uh, eventually, uh, he, uh, unless you go and do a lot of research in archives which, uh, which are not very well preserved, I will never know, probably. I just had an old picture of him in a, uh, uh, a military uniform, and he perished. Uh, uh, he perished uh, uh, three months before my father was born came from the war, from the First World War, and stayed with the family, and they uh, uh, conceived my father, uh, but then he was drafted before he was born and never heard of back. 
on my mother's family, uh, her senior brother was killed, in, uh, but not by, not in, in a fighting, but in pogroms by the Russian military. On uh, the for my wife, for my uh, father, my father came from the peasantry, but he became a military officer. And usually it was sort of portrayed, this social advance portrayed as a result of revolution. Uh, I'm not sure, you, you can become military officer uh, from peasant stock in many countries. It's not necessarily a revolutionary thing. My mother was a uh, daughter of a worker in a factory and she became a medical doctor, a pediatrician and then a um, neurological she probably, the revolution probably did most for her, although she did a lot for her country because she fought in the Second World War as a doctor and in the tank division. But uh, initially she got a free education through high school, but then also free education in the university. She went to a medical university and got herself a medical degree without paying a penny, but collecting a little stipend for food from the government. So, was it possible in Tsarist Russia? Probably, but exceptionally. Whereas in her case, it was not. Would it be possible without revolution? Probably, if February Revolution stayed in what we have in Western Europe now, in contrast to this country, in many countries, say in Scandinavia, in Norway, in Sweden, higher education, university education is free. There is, you have to pass through examination to get it free, but it is free. So it's no different from Soviet Union. Probably many things could have been achieved through evolution rather than through evolution. And cost, of course, would be much less. What other solutions besides war would you have suggested? Solutions to... Uh, to end the revolution besides war. Negotiations, working together, political uh, uh, struggle, everything that that belongs. To you. You see, history does.